Hello everyone, this is Kevin Martin, aka The Real Redneck Geek, and I want to welcome you all to a new project that I'm participating in with Word of the Nerd and Living for the Moments. It's called Workshop Wednesdays. Basically, I'm going to document something that I'm building, or I've already built if I'm feeling lazy one of these weeks. Uh, walk you through the process. Sometimes it might be a video of me building the thing. Others, it might just be a video of photos that I took during the actual process. More than likely, it'll be kind of a combination of both. But either way, I really hope you enjoy this new project. I'm excited about it, and I'm not the only cosplayer, you know, with Word of the Nerd doing this. Frank will be doing it. We'll also try to get in some other guys with us, too. And so just watch out on Word of the Nerd. Watch for these announcements, and I hope you guys really kind of start to like this series, because I'm personally really excited about it. Now, for today's video, we're going to start going through my Arkham Knight Scarecrow build. Okay, Arkham Knight is the newest title in the Arkham series, and it's yet to be released. I think it's supposed to be coming out in 2015 at some point. But this year at E3, they released a new trailer for the game where they debuted the new Scarecrow character. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, don't worry. I've actually edited down the trailer just a little bit to the good parts. So here, take a look. Look at it all. Lovely, lovely money. And it's all mine. No. The Ark of Night. Fight, 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 fight. The Ark, the Ark. So that's who we had. How many more bones will you crush? How many lives will you destroy in pursuit of what you call justice? You are the product of everything you fear. Violence, darkness, helplessness. All that remains is for you to watch as I drag your beloved Gotham into oblivion. So what'd you think? Some of the guns terrifying him. They've really changed the look of Scarecrow this time around. I like the look of Scarecrow this time around. He's secretly been one of my favorite Batman villains. Um, just, I don't, I can't really explain why, but he has kind of always been one of my favorite villains. So I'm really excited to build this version of Scarecrow. And, uh, yeah, it's... My goal is when I'm done with this, it's going to be the most terrifying thing ever, and really I'm just kind of hoping to make small children cry. So, first step was really the hardest step in this whole process because the game has not been released yet. Finding reference images was a beast. And with any build, whatever you're doing, you need as many reference images as you can get. Um, if there's an action figure of it, get it. You know, it's sometimes nice to be able to actually hold something in your hand to be able to see how it actually works and, you know, develop it that way. So trying to find reference images of this guy was really difficult. I've only found just a handful. So to an extent, I'm almost kind of building blind here. And that worries me a little bit, but at the same time, I'm not the guy who builds screen accurate replicates of what you see. I'm the guy who gets close to it. And, well, I put in my own artistic flair, let's say. So here's the one reference image that I was able to pull up off the web. I'm just in love with this new look that they've given Scarecrow with all the tubes and vials. His face is gnarly as hell right now. I mean, it looks like his Scarecrow mask has almost merged with his own flesh so that there's nothing left. This one, him sitting in the chair, I mean... They've kind of gone for almost a terrorist look with like that dynamite belt thing, but I mean, just the face is terrifying. I mean, it is truly, truly terrifying, and that's what I'm going for with this mask and the overall entire build. So, here we go. In the shop, first thing you always do in the shop is open up your drink. 
And these are the respirator pieces I got off of uh, Amazon for this. They were harder to find than I thought being round. And this is me trying to remove the health and safety warning labels, which, oddly enough, don't want to be removed. I guess you know, that's the health and safety saint. So we're going to have to figure out some way to grind these off of here, sand them off, do something. I'm going to be working with power tools. I'm in a basement. It's concrete walls. Power tools get really loud. Um, I've already damaged my ears enough. So I try to always put on the ear muffins. So I'm over here on a bench grinder right now, trying to use one of these grinding stones to see what will happen. And it's not working at all. So let's fast forward. And try the other wheel. It's still not working. So screw it. Sander. Let's get this thing off of here. Now I actually did really like the effect that this was creating because it was roughing up the surface. It was giving it a really kind of cool, grooved, and beaten, and just overall weathered look. Um, you know, with one thing, a lot of builds, especially something like this, you've got to rough up the pieces. They can't just be nice and smooth and pristine and brand new out of the box. It just doesn't work. So this actually was kind of a happy accident in a way you might say just because you know I was able to get these things looking just the way I wanted them to look sand them up, rough them up, get all that new sheen off of them presto bango, we're ready, good to go okay so I've got the respirators all sanded and roughed and got all that crap off of it and getting some of it off myself here and here you get the rare glimpse of what it looks like when I think. First, I have to have some brain fuel. Sorry, I know my lab is trashed. Deal with it. Yep, thinking, thinking. What I'm wondering here is I'm trying to figure out how to attach these things to the mask. Because, you know, the original Scarecrow actually wore a gas mask. Now it seems to have grown in and become part of himself. So, playing around a little bit. So I'd forget that. And I'm going to go over here to the paint booth, and I want to go ahead and start painting these. Get the brushes out of the way. Oh, poor motorized Patriot mask. May never see the light of day again. Okay, here we are. Speed round painting. Uh, this is my wet on wet on wet <laughs> painting technique that I do. It makes a really cool weathered effect. Um, you just keep spraying layers of paint over and just you leave them wet and they'll react with each other chemically sometimes in kind of really cool ways. Went back, checking the color. And the other trick is to oftentimes what you find that you have to do is to actually, you know, stand back and just let the paint fall over the piece. You know, kind of like the camera there where I'm trying to document this almost falls out of my hand. Been at the wrist strap for a reason. Um so yeah, I mean, it was just a quickie paint job, wet on wet on wet, to just try to get a metallic, bruised, beaten color. Um, it's the same thing that I do on a lot of my builds, if it's any kind of weathered or aged metal look. Um, you know, that's what we try to go, or what I try to go through. Say we try to go through, that's what I try to go through. And now back, looking at the reference image some more. And there are need for brain fuel air conditioning duct okay so we're painted but now we've got to figure out how to attach it still because it's got the two tubes coming off of it so immediately I think about a wooden dowel rod and yes anytime I pick up one I usually spin it around like that this one was obviously from another project because it's got a hole in the bottom of it but it's just too narrow so to the dowel bin and this looks to be about the right thickness why I put that back where it came from and not in the dowel bin, I have no idea. Um, this is just me working, getting some precise measurements here. Don't want to saw the glue gun in half. I'm going to need that later. Don't want to pick up washers off the floor either. And uh, I'm realizing I don't have a drawer for washers. See, told you, I almost always spin the dowel rods around. Back to the chop saw. There we go. First one cut. 
and now the precise measuring method that I utilize to get two identical pieces cut. And there we go. Two identical pieces cut. Well, identical enough. So, let's go paint these now. now. I know I'm not priming anything that I'm painting. I'm just putting the paint right on top of the raw surface, which is typically, you know, a, a pretty big no-no. But for these pieces, they need to look rough. They, you know, the paint will absorb into the wood, which is just fine. But these things need to look rough. They need to, you know, be beaten around a lot. So, ah. And yes, my lab is that trashed. It is that crowded. But yet I can still walk through it like there's no problem at all. Let's stare at the creepy face for a little bit longer. I mean, I just, I am so in love with this look. Good mask. Let's put you someplace safe while we work on something else. Now, this is typically where, you know, you could stop. You know, I've gotten to this point on this piece, nothing else to do on it until the paint dries. Or, do like me, and I go to the next piece. So, it's not uncommon for me. That's one of the reasons why my shop is so trashed. I don't work on just one thing at a time. I have multiple builds going. And, you know, what you're seeing here is just me thinking. I, it's literally me trying to blueprint this thing out in my head. I've been thinking about it for a few days and I decided I was going to go with L200 foam, which L200 is just a different grade of those EVA foam mats that we all use and love. Um, I've got two giant sheets of this and I was thinking this would be a really good substance to use. And then as I'm putting it on the floor, I look. And there in my bin is a whole bunch of pink foam. Pink insulation foam, what I use for a lot of things, especially like dead mouse ears. So now I'm thinking again. And you know what? I've got enough scrap pink foam here that's in decent enough shape. I bet I could make this out of pink foam. Man, this EVA foam is really comfortable to stand on. I wonder if they use it for floor mats. Okay, so scavenging for pink foam done. Still debating a little bit here, looking at it. I mean, I'm honestly basically just trying to build a blueprint in my brain. All right, L200 foam. You've been retired. And we're going to go... Well, sorry, hit itch. Um, now let's start measuring, because that arm piece goes from his wrist to the bend of his arm, so I need to scale that to me. So, yes, I do happen to have a tape measure just hanging there. Why I have a tape measure hanging there, it's best not to ask. Um, came out with eight inches long. That requires brain fuel. Heating vent is still there. Go back, look. And this is one of the reasons why I do actually really like having my iPad down there in the lab with me is I can just keep the reference image right there and I can adjust it, I can resize it, I can zoom in. And yes, me thinking more and more. It's a very fortunate thing that I didn't set off the smoke alarm thinking so much on how to build that. So here we go, trying to measure some more, figure out how wide to make this thing. And I came up with, I think it was three inches. I don't remember. Now then, time to draw this thing out on my pink foam. Oh, it was four inches. That's right, it was four inches. Piece. If you're wondering what the squiggles are on the other piece of pink foam underneath there, uh, that was an attempt. <laughs> Both of those sides were attempts at wiring diagrams for a, a, a Daft Punk helmet rig that a friend of mine was doing. And we were trying to, I don't know, 
mythic runes or something. But whoop, your muffins. Time to cut. Now, yet you can cut pink foam with a razor blade, with you know a box cutter, with just about anything. I like using my scroll saw to cut it. It's really simple. I just have to slow the speed of the saw down so I don't, you know, accidentally just rip through. But you know, it gets me a nice, even, straight cut, nice and smooth, very quickly. Um, if your razor blades sometimes aren't sharp enough, it's really easy to get, you know, some nasty, gnarly, jagged edges. Especially if you're like me and you're not the most patient person in the world. So. I really like using my scroll saw. And right here, I just happened to notice that where I did that cut, those two pieces are now exactly the same size that I are, that I needed. Those two pieces, you know, it just worked out that way, and I just kind of realized it, measuring for check, check, sure enough, two blocks, eight by four. So now I have the top and bottom. And this is where working in your shop alone gets to be kind of tricky. Um, I know these things are three quarters of an inch a piece, but um, if you know me, you will know that I don't do math at all. So trying to math out, you know, I measured four, now I need three quarters of an inch on either side of four. Uh, what does that number look like? So eventually figured it out. Nope. Not enough. Scoot out some more. Still a little tight. This is another reason why my lab is kind of trashed. I don't throw away my scraps. I just keep them and if they're a certain size, I keep the scraps almost indefinitely. You know, just because I could come up with a project like this where I actually need them. I don't need the full huge sheet of foam. I just need a little piece of it. So I tend to be a hoarder. I'll admit it. Getting the new measurements on the other piece of foam. More lines just so it's all super confusing. Brain fuel. Sorry, that my brain works that way. That light actually has a little pull tab on it, and it had a little crystal, clear plastic crystal-looking decoration on it. I'm like, why the heck would you ever put that on something that's going to be used in a shop? These are just shop lights. Why are you putting crystals on my shop lights, manufacturers? How much more did I have to pay for that? Drives me up the wall. God, i got to get this place cleaned up. Mock it out. Yep, I can get my arm through that. Now, you might notice the glue gun is a DeWalt glue gun. Um, yeah, it has a stubby glue stick in it. I'm trying to find where all my glue sticks are. Yay, one glue stick. Oy. Ah, there's some more. Okay, I have glue. Um, the DeWalt glue gun does heat up quickly but it also has a like a thermal sensor in it where if it sits unused me you don't pull that trigger for a few minutes it actually turns itself off so that then when you do try to use it you've got you know half melted glue in it some and it comes out cold and then all of a sudden it comes out scaldingly hot um, it's really irritating it's uh, kind of a regret that I have in buying that thing. Hot glue is hot. I have learned that, so I try not to use my fingers to smooth it until it's cooled off a little bit, or I forget and you know get it all over myself and scream in agony. And there you go. You can see a little bit of it getting super hot, and uh, actually melted the foam. So here I'm trying to reinforce it. Clean it up a little bit. 
top piece now, you can see here where I'm really having to pull on that trigger to get glue to come out. That's because I let it sit for too long and it, you know, turned itself off. Yeah, hot glue is hot. So, now I have the base built. I'm just going back with the glue gun, filling in some gaps. I want this thing to be pretty sturdy. I mean, I don't want it falling apart on me, but I don't want, you know, just globs and globs of hot glue everywhere. Um, it fits. goes right on my arm. I'm kind of happy with this, so let's go back over here to the reference image and check it out. And at this point, I'm realizing that I have screwed up in a most royal fashion. The actual arm piece has basically two cuffs and then a space in the middle that is recessed. I just built a solid block of foam. So, um, crap. Yep, taking a closer look at it. It's definitely got two arm cuffs. It's not just a solid rectangle. Um, I just wasted all this time. And I've wasted all of your time by showing you that, you know, I built this thing and I built it wrong. So, what was supposed to have been an informative and fun video has been a complete waste of your time. But thank you for watching all the same. Um, I've got to figure something out on this. There, there needs to be a way to salvage it. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to keep staring at it and hopefully something comes to mind. Um, there is absolutely nothing coming to mind. I have there we can get a good look and see just how bad I've screwed up. Even in a way to an extent it looks like the shape could be wrong. I don't have a, any real good reference images of what this new needle piece looks like. So it makes it really difficult to figure out how to build this thing. Um, but I have royally screwed up on this thing. It's this, this isn't going to work. I'm trying to convince myself that, you know, maybe I could do something and looky there. Would you look at that? The glue melted the foam, got too hot, and I'm left with a giant gap there. I've got good seams on a couple of spaces, but there at the back, I've just got this huge hole. Um, I've built a really neat little pink foam box here, so, yep, I've done gone screwed up. So, there you have it, our first Workshop Wednesday, um, and I completely wasted your time by showing you a failed build, and the most interesting thing that you got to see was me sanding two plastic discs. Um, yeah, can't win all of them, but... All the same, I hope you've enjoyed what you've watched. I hope you'll come back next week and watch Frank's video. I'll be back in two weeks with part two of this series that I'm doing on the Scarecrow Mask. Uh, we've got a lot of different things in plan for this, so please stick with us week to week. Like I said, come back next week and watch Frank's video. I'll be back in two weeks. Um, until then, this is Kevin Martin, the Real Redneck Geek, saying thank you for watching. And on behalf of Word the Nerd Online, keep coming back, everybody.